One of my favorite parts of Krakow is the fact that um, all around the city uh, where the walls are located, uh, the original medieval walls, as I said, this is one of the few cities in Europe that still has their medieval walls. They built this beautiful green space, a park, and so you can walk all along the walls um, and um, sort of uh, relax and take in medieval Krakow. Uh, we're standing here uh, along that park um, next to the uh, Metropolitan Seminary, this building here, which is part of the heart of uh, the uh, Polish country. I mean, like, um, the clergy have always been um, a central part of Polish life. Um, you know, Poland in the Middle Ages had the largest um, nobility of all of Europe, which meant that as a percentage of the population, uh, they had the most people who were considered nobles. And actually in the Polish nobility or the Polish um, system, monarchy, um, the kings were actually elected by the nobles. And that's why it's really important that so many of them were, um, uh, so many of the population, so much of the population was part of the nobility. I think it was something like 15% of the population were considered nobles. Um, but, um, you know, included in that percentage of the population were considered nobles were the uh, the clergy um, and uh, so uh, this is the seminary of Krakow but of course this building was closed during the Second World War uh, the Nazis made an active attempt to try to kill Polish culture and so um, they closed down you know the, the theaters and the uh, universities the um, schools of higher learning because um, without knowledge without arts uh, without worship, um, you can't uh, maintain your integrity as a people. And so during the Second World War, it was um, John Paul II who was actively sort of staging a resistance to the uh, Germans, not by uh, taking up arms, but by um, maintaining that culture, um, by throwing, you know, putting on plays of Polish, uh, you know, uh, famous uh, playwrights, um, because by doing so, um, he was maintaining what it meant to be Polish and, you know, like, what's the point of um, surviving the war if you lose, you know, your identity, he thought, uh, and rightly so. And it was that work that he did during the Second World War that really um, allowed the Polish people to survive for another 50 years under uh, Russian domination. You know, some of the countries next door um, to Poland, um, for instance, the Czech Republic, um, culturally really just absolutely destroyed during the Second World War and then again by the, the Russians. And um, without that strong culture, um, you know, the um, integrity of their country really sort of suffered. And um, there's a lot going on here in Poland uh, because of John Paul's little act of defiance. Um, so anyway, John Paul was not uh, trained at this building here uh, because, of course, the Nazis um, closed it down. Uh, he was trained over there at the King's Palace. I don't know if you can see it through the trees here. Um, you can see uh, maybe the uh, tower of the cathedral uh, where I celebrated Mass this morning. Uh, I pointed out that residence behind the statue of John Paul II, which was the Cardinal's residence. Well, that would have been John Paul II's residence uh, during uh, his tenure um, as Archbishop of Krakow. Uh, and so, um, um, you know, everywhere you look, there's there's history. I mean, you can think about um, Nazis gunning people down on these streets. You can think about uh, clandestine meetings of uh, seminarians in the bishop's residence to study uh, for the priesthood. Uh, John Paul was ordained not in a church, but in the small chapel inside the archbishop's residence, again, because um, he was not supposed to be studying. It was part of the way that they wanted to kill the Polish culture. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just a beautiful thing to think about.